All right, so in this video, we are going to do a review of chapter 1.3, which is basically the properties of parent functions. And this is going to be an extremely quick and easy video. Basically, all you have to know in this chapter is the basic five parent functions in chapter number one, which is a linear function, f of x equals to x. And then you have a quadratic function, so f of x equals x squared. You have your radical function, which is root x. You have your reciprocal function, which is one over x. And last one, I'll squeeze it here, is the absolute function, which is the absolute of x. Now you just have to know these basic functions. You don't need to know anything in terms of transformations and things like that, because that's gonna show up later in the chapter, which is why I said this is probably going to be one of the shortest lessons in grade 11 math. So linear function, as you probably know, the basic one just looks like that. It has a slope of positive one, y-intercept of zero, and just looks like that. A basic x square function, quadratic, just looks like that. Again, x and y-intercept of zero. A radical function, starting point is again, a zero, zero. The one over x function just has a vertical asymptote at x equals to zero. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals to zero. And then it's split like this in the two quadrants. And the absolute function is going to be just a V-shaped function. Again, x and y-intercept is just zero, zero. It's pretty much the whole lesson right there. But there are a few other things. So I won't bother with domain and range because later in the chapter, you'll learn how to find domain and range of transform functions, and it's better to do that over there. But we will talk about a few properties. So one of the things is we just wanna compare functions over here and see which properties are similar and which properties are different. So for example, if I compare all of them, these four have an X and Y intercept of zero. So I guess I'll label this one, two, three, four, Five. So one similarity between one, two, three, and five is you can say is they have x intercept is zero and the y intercept is also zero. And then the difference for this one is that you can say it has no x, no y intercept. So I'll write the difference down here no x or y intercept. So when you're comparing, that's one similarity and difference you can use between some of them. Let's say we're comparing these two. Let's do one and two. We already know the similarity between one and two. The x and y intercept can be used, but what's the difference between one and two? Well, one is increasing everywhere. That's one thing you can say, whereas two is decreasing for the first half from negative infinity till zero, but it's increasing from zero till infinity. So if I want to write differences over here for this one, I can say one, basically a linear function is increasing everywhere. Whereas two, your quadratic function is decreasing from negative infinity till zero, and then it's increasing from zero till positive infinity. So it's pretty easy to find differences between all of these. Some of them may be slightly difficult to find the differences. Another similarity that I can mention, so let's say, for example, we're comparing 3 and 4. Well, what's a similarity between 3 and 4? It's a bit hard to tell, but this is a similarity that's there in all of these. So all five of these actually have one similarity at least that I know of, and that's they all pass through the point one comma one. And that's pretty cool about all the parent functions that they pass through this point here, and I'll explain it through the equations as well. But if you notice, they all pass through the point one comma one. And if you think about it, if I replace x here with one, y will be one. One squared is also one. The square root of one is also one. One divided by one is one. The absolute of one is one. 
So this is a pretty important similarity to say that they pass through one comma one. That's a very difficult one when comparing any of these graphs to one over X to find a similarity. Differences with one over X is really simple. You can just say it has asymptotes. None of the other graphs have asymptotes. So that's something you can put as differences. Generally speaking, that's the only types of questions that come from this chapter, but knowing the graphs are very important because you're going to have to sketch them with transformations later on in this chapter.